In this video using Apple Motion, I'm going to show you step by step how to create this viral pixel punch transition for Final Cut Pro. Also, for all of my Patreon members, you can download this project file right now. And if you don't feel like signing up as a member, you can pick it up as a one time purchase for just $5. To create this effect, we will open up Apple Motion, which should greet you with the project browser. If it doesn't, you can always go up to file and then select new from project browser. For this project, we of course want the Final Cut transition so that we can continue to use it over in Final Cut Pro over and over again. On the right side, I'm gonna recommend you set your duration to one second. I'm gonna set my frame rate actually to 29.97 and I'm going to set my preset to broadcast HD 1080p because this particular effect is pretty intense on the computer. And don't worry, by creating this in a 1080p project, it still can be applied on 4K videos. From there, we can go ahead and push open. The first thing we need to do is make sure that both transition A and transition B are there for the entire duration of the project. So I will first take transition B and just extend that to the beginning and we'll take transition A and extend that to the end. Now to make things more visually clear, I'm gonna import some footage so you can clearly see what we're doing, but you do not need to follow this particular step. So I will go ahead and just drag in this first shot from Envato and then we can find a second shot, maybe something that looks quite a bit different. This pink lake looks pretty good, and we can just drag that on top of transition B. To get this effect, it's super simple. We're first just gonna select the group that contains both transition A and B, and we'll go up to our filters. From filters, we'll go to stylize, and there's this super cool filter called relief. You can already start to see it taking place. If I move this around, you can see that 3D dimension it's giving to us based on the luminance channels of our video shot. So what we can do is go to our inspector and I'm going to offset this back to just be zero, zero because we want it to be directly in the middle. So now it looks like absolutely nothing is happening to our shot. From there, we can affect the front size to make this effect apparent. So what we'll do is on the first frame, we'll add a keyframe to the front size. Then we'll just move halfway through our project, which should be about frame 15 and we'll drag the front size up. And in fact, I really wanna make this effect really strong. So let's just click and drag directly on it and it can go up to a value of four. So we can see that taking place. Now we can go to the very end of our project and I'll just drag that front size down back to a value of one. So if I push play, we can start to see the effect taking place. Again, this is very intense on the computer, so you're gonna have some stutters. From there, we need to smooth out how this effect is being brought in, because right now it's a very linear animation. So let's go over to our keyframe editor, and if we select the relief effect, we should see it down here inside of our keyframes. If not, you can change this over to animated, and that should now have it show up here for you. We can select one of these keyframes, then press Command A to select all of them, right click, and then we'll go to Interpolation and select Bezier. I'll go ahead and extend this so it's a little bit taller here. And now we can see all the different Bezier handles. So to really make this effect pop, let's select this first frame. I'm gonna hold Shift, grabbing this handle, and we'll drag it to make a really severe S curve. Then we'll click and drag over the last keyframe and do the exact same thing, selecting that handle, I'll hold shift and drag it back to the left. So now we should have this crazy looking S handle shape. So pushing play, the effect is looking really cool, but obviously we're not transitioning to the second shot just yet. We will get to that, but first I wanna add in one more effect and that is the pixelate effect. To do so, we will select the group which contains both of the transitions. We're gonna go up to filters. We'll go to stylize once again, and this time we're gonna select pixelate. So you can see as I drag up the scale, the pixels get larger and larger. But if we move forward, it looks like we're actually just pixelating the relief effect which we've added. What we want instead is for these pixels to get that relief extrusion effect. So all we need to do is drag the pixelate effect underneath relief and now you can immediately see the difference here. The pixels are actually being pushed out from that relief effect, giving us that 3D dimension. So now we can drag our playhead back and find where we want the pixels to start being introduced and drag the scale to one. We'll click to add a keyframe, move forward till we're at the peak of the animation and drag these pixels up to a place where we're happy. I found somewhere around the 20-ish mark was looking good. And then we can move forward to where we want the pixels to dissipate 
and we can drag that scale to zero. And that is looking really, really cool. It's giving us that pixel punch effect. So now how do we transition from the first shot to the second shot? Well, you have many different ways. One super simple way is to just drag the opacity down to zero and you absolutely could do that and that's giving us kind of a cool effect. But what I like to do is use the Luma keyer because this will allow us to have the bright luminance channels of the shot before remain in our shot. So this bright cloud is going to actually stay over the top of the secondary shot, which is really cool. So what we can do is selecting transition A, we'll go to filters, we'll go to masks and keying and select the Luma keyer. And you can already start to see it taking place here. I can adjust this Luma keyer and we'll see more or less of that first shot as we do so. So to make this effect work, let's just drag the Luma keyer all the way so that our first shot is completely visible. And we'll find when we're really wanting to start to ramp up this little animation here, somewhere around frame 11 looks good. And we can click to add a keyframe to the luminance values. Then we'll move forward to the peak of the animation and we'll just drag this over to the right. And you can still see these clouds are in play as well as from that pink shot, that nice bridge. So that is looking pretty cool. And maybe I'll adjust the dark values here too. That's looking good. And then we'll move forward a few more frames and let's drag the dark values all the way up so that they completely vanish. So that's looking super cool, but we need to prep ourselves in case we have two shots that aren't super compatible with this effect. So this is just preparing ourselves for the future, no matter what shot we're working with. And to do that, we're gonna need to transition out transition A here. So we'll select that and locate the opacity. From there, we can click to add a keyframe on our opacity, move forward a couple frames, and then drag that to zero. Now, no matter what clips we have in our timeline, this effect is going to work flawlessly. And that's it. Now we just need to push Command S to save. And because we selected a transition at the beginning of this project, it is going to allow us to publish to Final Cut Pro. So I'm just going to call this the Pixel Punch Transition. And in our categories, I'm going to throw it into FCB's Patreon because I will be distributing this over on my Patreon page. And from there, we can push Publish. Now, anytime I want this transition, I can head over to Final Cut Pro under FCB's Patreon and just drag it onto my timeline. So that is how you can create this viral pixel punch transition using Apple Motion for Final Cut Pro. Don't forget to pick this up over on my Patreon page right now. With that being said, I cannot wait to see you in the next one.